Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wish you a good day today and every day, inshallah. Uh, today I'll be talking about I'm free to do what I want to do. This was a movie in the 60s in the Arab world of a young girl who wanted to express her absolute freedom. But before we start with this talk today, I'll give you some of my personal experience which happened to be two days ago. I was going to London on Tuesday morning to meet an official, a foreign official. And when I arrived to his place, without mentioning the name, he canceled the meeting without telling me. There was some misunderstanding of message was sent to him. I was left in the reception for an hour. I felt deeply humiliated, but I have to contain my anger. Because some time ago, the same official was uh, trying to meet with me. But anyway, this is beside the point. When I contained my anger, I had a colleague with me who looked at my face. I said, can I walk you to the tube station? He said, no, 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 no. I couldn't be able to speak. I couldn't be able to talk to anyone. I just had this kind of deep and severe headache which like a hat headache. On the way back from London to Birmingham, I took the train, and I was a little bit worried to be left to my feeling in the train. I was writing on the way to London an, uh, 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 an article about our problems. And alhamdulillah, Allah has given me the ability to keep writing from the time the train started till we arrived to Birmingham without knowing how on earth this kind of knowledge or words has been descended upon me. I still did not get out of my shock. I had a meeting with an organization willing to try their decision, to change their decision to join our conference. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let me to succeed in this issue. So I went from diving deep down into the depressive state into rising high to the motivated or motivative state. So I was going down, then I went up within a few hours. When I looked back at what I've been doing, I realized that the night before, I had a sleepless night. I couldn't be able to sleep. And to overcome this, I was saying, as salatu wa salamu alayka Rasulullah, the whole night in my bed. And I believe that taking me out of the depressive state into the motivated state is because of the salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. This is my reminder to any one of us when you stand and working for the public, get somebody to help you all the time. Get the Prophet Sallallahu Get Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to be behind you and in front of you. Come back to the talk of today. This little girl was a teenager in secondary school and she wants to do everything with nobody should ask her. Her father and her mother were separated. She had to live with her auntie. And every day she wants to go out, late, mix, dance, whatever it is. And the auntie was saying to him, you cannot do this, you cannot do this. Till one day she has a quarrel with the auntie. And she went back to stay with her father. While staying with her father, he gave her the freedom. Every time she asks him an opinion, his answer is, you are free, do what you want. She became bored, very bored, because she found that nothing is challenging in her life. She does what she wants without anybody questioning her. 
Even while she was at her auntie's house, if you look at this small photograph, you found that this subconscious there, this small shadow there, at night when she's in bed, we're actually awakening her. So you cannot do this. It's against your morality. This against your custom. It's against your uh, culture and it's against your religion. Next one, please. There's some definitions of freedom, which without going to all of them, I just choose one. Liberty consists of doing anything which does not harm others. That's it. Very plain, it's by UN. Okay. According to the UN Declaration of Rights of Man and the Citizen, man, I mean man and woman, liberty means consists of doing anything, do anything which does not harm or hurt others. We need to agree on some sort of definition for freedom. Because at the moment, as we speak, there's something that all of us are fighting against, which is terrorism. But we do not agree on the definition of terrorism. Why I am talking about this topic today? Because in the Facebook, I found boys and girls, not only boys as teenagers, but at the age of 20, 30 plus, writing something very silly and creating a lot of argument about nonsense and nuisance. The color of my hijab, the style of my hijab, the length of my hijab, my hair style, uh, which sometimes like a bird's nest, sometimes like a scissor, scissor cut, is very funny. But for them it's fashion, fine, there's no problem, it's personal freedom, do whatever you want. But when you find that those people who are educated are deeply engaged in this trivial discussion, this hurts at a time when you find millions and millions and millions and millions of people are suffering. People are wasting their time, money and effort talking about the new look, the look look, the lol look, the bull look, the cow look, the goat look, and look a look. You can't, you can't believe that. You can't believe that. In the good old days, yes, we used to be doing some trivial things like this in the 60s and 70s. But the level of awareness of our religious education was less than it's now, because now there's a lot of communication. A lot of sheikhs and imam, a lot of printed matter, a lot of available information on the internet. At our time, it was only the book. And some one source of information, either the state television or the state radio. Do we say that in the 60s and 50s and 40s and 70s, we did not do trivial things? We did, but not to this low level. Not to this low level. Okay, next one, please. This is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu about shafa'at. Even prophets do not have the absolute freedom. No one of them has it. Adam in heaven, there's boundaries. Allah told them, don't eat from the, the tree. When, 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 when people want to all the prophets, for asking for shafa'at from them. You know what Adam told them? I did a mistake. I ate from the tree. Ibrahim alayhi salam in the same hadith said, I did one or two lies. Okay? Nuh alayhi salam, he said, I made a curse against my people. Musa alayhi salam said what? I killed the Egyptian. And so on. So, no prophet have absolute freedom. Even Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Surah Abbas wa Tawalla and Ja'ul Ahma, when Abdullah ibn Maktoum came, the blind man came to him while the heads of Christ was sitting, the tribes were sitting with him, he ignored him. He was not, he does not have the right or the freedom to ignore Abdullah ibn Maktoum while those people are sitting there. So Quran was revealed. 
to educate us that even the Prophet Sallallahu has a correction from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So in freedom, no Prophet has absolute freedom. What are the in in myself? What's my personal elements of freedom? How to become to talk about freedom, to understand freedom, to create free society? What shall I do before I talk about freedom? First of all, look at our society and the climate, and we have to work very hard to make a strong civil society. Because this is a climate where the freedom free freedom tree will grow and bear its fruit. If you don't have a strong civil society sector, freedom tree will not grow. This is the climate. But actually, personally, I have to be educated. Education, because it's a state education, could become nowadays a passive activity. Because you force children to go to school. You force them to study. You force them to excel. You force them to get a degree. They might not have the desire or the urge to get educated, but they go there because this is a society. So education could be seen as positive stroke, passive. People get educated to get married. People get educated to get a degree, to get a job, but not for the sake of education. This is the first step at the bottom. Then the urge for learning. You know what the difference between uh, education and learning? Learning is something personally you take to teach. You understand to, de to develop and to deliver. Less people, less people of the educated people will go to the process of learning so they can teach the community, they can teach the society, they can teach the generation. So go from education, which could be a passive, to learning, which is a positive, to understanding. Once we start to learn, understand what we are talking about. Does everybody has a PhD or master or call it understand the complexity of the society he or she are serving? Or we just put these titles on our letterhead or on our business cards? Say, hey guy, I'm a PhD man. Hey guy, I'm an MD my, a man. Hey guys, I'm a woman who got all this, 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 this. So understanding is more comprehensive than the process of education. Sir. Then to realize this is the society, complexity, and the components of the society. Then we move up to the highest level, which is awareness, a drug. But ta'alim, ta'allum, fahim. Uh, realization him some uh ma uh badin a drug fil akhr. Why you ban a drug? Ta'alim ta'allum fehm why a drug. Ta'alim ta'allum fehm why a drug. Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of them, use this formula to take to the nomads, masses, give them the very simple message. And select amongst them the people who have capability to learn more. Then they need to understand, to lead. But before leading, they have to realize and to be aware of what's happening in the society. What's happening in the society. And this is actually, before we talk about freedom, I have to go through this. I have as an individual to go through this process. From passive to positive to active, to make the positive social change of the society. Next one, please. These are the obstacles or the barriers which stops freedom. Ignorance, of course. 
leading an ignorant nation far more easier than leading educated nation which is aware of what's happening. Corruption in the society. In this corruption of society, corruption is not only stealing. It's not only uh, 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 forging. It's not only uh, uh, attacking women or uh, what do you call it, harassing women. No, corruption is moral. It's moral. The moral corruption is more uh, uh, dangerous than all because it leads to all this kind of corruption. This will happen when, in absence of the of a uh, of strong civil society. Unfortunately, most of the Arab and Muslim countries do not believe in civil society sector or a strong civil society sector or a strong civil society organization. These are the obstacles. The climate is the absence of civil society or the weak civil society sector and the steps is ignorance, corruption, extremism, religious extremism. Nowadays, we find a lot of religious, religious leaders, whether they are Muslims, Christian, Jews, others, whether they are mosques or churches, are politicizing their religious teaching. By doing this, they will be dividing their own community, mushrooming it, needless to say, dividing the whole nation. Unfortunately, some of those religious leaders are creating extremism. Whether they are Christian, Muslim, Jews, or others. Because this is based on ignorance. And this will definitely lead to conflict. So ignorance, corruption, religious extremism, religious extremist leaders, religious extremist leaders, can you correct it? I'll collect it later on. Religious extremist leaders. And then will lead to conflict. I'm saying this because I'm still remembering this discussion between those young men and women on the Facebook. Spend times and times and times and times and times and effort. Midnight, beyond midnight. Anytime, talking about very trivial things while the world is suffering badly, while their neighborhood is suffering, while their family is suffering, while even themselves, they have no brighter future. Next, please. Does freedom has a parameter? Yes, of course, it has a parameter. Coming back to the movie, remember the movies of the 50s and 40s and 60s about the family union on Sunday and uh, the family values and uh, the family lunch on Sunday and uh, visit to the church on Sunday morning and uh, in, in, in the West, all these kind of the old West, Western movies, beautiful moral values, it's not there anymore. Look at the mother, look at the father, look at the aunties and grandma and grandpa who was living with us in the same house, in the farm or in the big family house. Okay? When we come to say there's a parameters for freedom, what is the first parameter? Is the tradition and the custom. Strong, but you have to live with it. You have to deal with it. You can do something which is strange for everybody. Okay? Culture. Our culture is a part of our parameters for the freedom that we'd like to enjoy. But we agreed at the very beginning, you can do anything you like with one condition, you don't harm or hurt anybody. Loud music in a dormitory, when your colleague in the next room cannot sleep, cannot study, exercising or sexual habits in your room or anybody else in the dormitory, 
can sleep very rude coming out naked in a dormitory in the student sector section or university I'm free why I'm saying this because in the 70s when I came to this country I met one of those uh, culture attaché from a certain country you know what he's saying to his uh, the student from his who come to get uh, the master and the PhD from UK this was in Glasgow he told them boys and girls whenever you go back home I want everybody in the street look at you and say that you came from UK how then he said something else our body is made up of many organs nose ears, eyes, tongue, and private parts. There's no harm of showing any part of the body. Consider my sexual organs like my nose, like my ear, like my eyes. This is the kind of culture he wants the students in the West, or Muslims, or Arabs, to go back to their own country against their own local culture, and values, community values as well. Community values is another parameter for the freedom. National history, if you'd like to live in a nostalgic era, in the history of the great conqueror of your nation, you have to rise to their level. Not to be nostalgic and not rising to the level. Islam was a great civilization. Okay, what are you doing? Arab civilization, okay, what are you doing? Roman civilization, okay, what are you doing? Greek civilization, hey, what are you doing? Denka, Inca civilization, hey, what are you doing? As Mexican, or as Egyptian, or as Arabs, or as Muslims, or as Greek, or as Roman. So if you look at the history back, and you would like to bring a scroll, you have to live the way they lived as well. Your status among the countries is at the bottom or at the top. It's another parameters are bounded for your freedom because you are presenting a superpower or you are presenting an, a, a third world country. And the manner, your personal manner, will, will, will actually definitely, your personal manner will definitely actually put parameter for your absolute freedom and the last and your uh, least, what is the top one? Creed? What is? Your, your, your faith. Your faith should be a guidance for you. So, your faith, your manner, the global status of your country, national history and glory, community values, culture, and customs that you have. My statement now to all of us, that none of us, I just listen to this, none of us, none of us, especially the young, none of us has the right to waste their money, their time, their effort, their life, at a time when their country and their society and their nation and their community need them badly. When they are living in a corrupt society or when their country or societies or treasure are for sale or when the society become ma is, are, is made of displaced people refugees and when the level of poverty is high on the highest where the level of sickness is booming and so and so on you have no right you are not free you are not free to waste your time you are not free to waste the resources of your country. You are not free 
to waste your effort. You are not free to even waste your resources. You are not free even to waste your thoughts. You are not free to do nothing. And sit and do nothing. You are not free. Because look at your country now. If you are from the Arab world, I don't want to describe what's happening there. Everywhere. If you are not from Muslim, a Muslim background, don't know, I don't want to describe what's happening there. If you take an example like Yemen or Syria or Iraq, three great countries who created great civilization in the past. How many million, 20 or 30 million people are there between displacement, becoming refugees, or becoming locked in as hostage in their own countries. You are not free. You are not free to see humanity is suffering in Myanmar, in Afghanistan, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Libya, in Yemen, in Syria, in Somalia, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in Palestine, in Gaza especially, are not free. You are not free. You are not free. We are not free to look at all this and still wasting our time talking about the color of our hair, the style of our hair, the new look that we have, the food that we ate yesterday, okay, the last joke, or waste all our time and money and effort to become hooligans behind football, which is a new religion. We love sport. We love to play football. But we don't worship football. And we don't worship soccer. And we don't watch superstars. We love drama. But we don't watch the stars, the movie stars. We like to listen to music, but don't be taken the whole day in and out, sucked in, this kind of thing. You are not free. Talk about the freedom of the teenager, yes, with limitation, but we are not free to waste our time, our life, our effort, and the resources of our country, and the resources of humanity. Come back to conclude because I nearly finished now. Okay. We talked about definition of freedom. Very simple. Even prophets don't have absolute freedom. And you have to do all this homework to understand what your personal freedom is to go from education, which is passive, to learning, which is positive, to understanding, realization, and awareness to build this strong civil society to protect your freedom. Then these are the obstacles against freedom, ignorance, of course, corruption, the state, religious extremist leaders, and conflict. Then we talk about the parameters of freedom we have in our life, which is tradition, custom, culture, community values, national history and glory of my country, global status of my country, my manner, and my faith. And I thank you for being patient to listen to me today, but we are not free while our countries are for sale or are divided or are becoming corrupt and our resources being stolen by the bad apples in the country. All the best. I love you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.